Hey, what's up and how's it going? My name is Toby and today we're going to talk about occlusion in Lightship. So as you can see, occlusion brings just another level of realism into our AR experience by just covering 3D models with actual real world objects. So this is quite exciting. And in this video, we're going to learn how to do it. So setting up occlusion is not too hard. So let's begin by setting up Lightship. All right, so to set up Lightship, let's go to lightship.dev and here on the top right, click sign in and either sign in with our account or create a new one. Then we want to create a new project, call it as we want and save the API key for later. After that, let's just go to the Unity Hub, create a new project, name it as we like, and then also find a location that we want to save it and also select our organization, then just create a new project. Inside of Unity, let's go to our build settings and make sure that we add our open scene to the um, scenes in build. And then we want to go to the package manager and then go to lightship.dev slash docs slash ARDK. We're going to hit setup and then we want to enter this link to install the uh, ARDK by going to the package manager, click on the little plus, then select our git URL and hit add. So next up, let's go to Lightship and settings. And then we want to go to XR plugin management and select Lightship for all the platforms that we want to use it. So PC, Android, iOS, as you want. So then we want to go to build settings again and switch to the preferred platform. For me, it's iOS, for you it might be Android. So let's just do that. And after that, let's go back to the project settings and copy our API key. Then let's go to the project validation and just hit fix all for all the different platforms. And then in our uh, Lightship SDK, let's just set up the playback path. Uh, by the way, there are some playbacks in the video description and you can just download them and select the path so we can test in editor. Okay, so let's create a, a new XR origin. And after that, we're also gonna add another AR session. And so then we can just delete our main camera. And if we now hit play, we would should see some video playback feed that we can use to uh, create our own AR application. Once we got our scene ready, it's very easy to just add the occlusion effect. All we need to do is we need to go into our XR origin into our main camera, and then we can just add component. Then we can enter occlusion and just add the Lightship Occlusion extension. And so it's going to add the AR Occlusion Manager, which is the native uh, functionality that the AR Foundation brings, and then also the Lightship Occlusion extension. So let's begin by taking a look at these settings here. So first of all, there's the environmental depth, which is going to look out for any objects that might want to occlude your 3D objects that you got in the scene. And there's also the human segmentation mode, which is going to look for people that might be in front of the 3D objects and is also then occluding the 3D objects with those people. So let's first of all, take a look at what kind of options we got here. So usually there's fastest, medium and best. And also here we got the same. And I've done some more or less extensive testing on those settings. And I can safely say that it's very different from phone to phone. So for example, if we take a look at the iPhone 11 that I have, I've gone to fastest settings, medium and best. And actually, even for the best and the fastest settings, there's not much of a difference at all between those two options. And so I could safely go with fastest for this phone compared to something like an iPhone 14 Pro. In this example, we see that the depth map is very much different, right? So it's a lot smoother and the difference between the very white space, which is at the front of the camera and the more or less black space, which would be somewhere in the very back is well, quite smooth and a lot better than on the iPhone 11. And I also found that for the iPhone 14 Pro, well, it makes a huge difference if you have the fastest or the best mode. And I also compared the performance and I could say that there's not much difference from iPhone 11 at least from the fastest to the best. All right, so then for this tutorial, let's set everything to best like that. And so then 
also we want to prefer the environmental occlusion because usually we will have more environment in front of the object than a human but this really depends on of course the experience that you want to build temporal smoothing is also quite interesting it's basically going to make the edges more smooth so for example if you hold your hand in front of a 3d object then you might see those little triangles uh, on the sides so temporal smoothing is going to make this one a little bit better but also highly depending on the device that you want to use so let's take a look at those more advanced settings here we get with the light chip occlusion extension and so here it's also very much dependent on what kind of phone you use but the most useful feature that will give most people a value is actually the um, occlusion suppression so if we're gonna enable this one we will also need to add a semantic segmentation manager so we can add component let's add semantic ar semantic segmentation manager what you might see in a lot of occlusion examples is that there is some z fighting between the object and the ground and this might be for example with shadows or also if an object is immediately standing on the ground and so the um, occlusion suppression will just basically suppress everything that is the ground so this z fighting will not happen and for that all we need to go is uh, to the suppression channels and just add one and enter ground and so once that is done and once that is installed on our device we will see that the shadows look a lot smoother and so for the other settings well the target frame rate it does not make that much of a difference if it's 20 or 30 or 60 i would probably keep it on 30 so we get a nice refresh rate but of course performance might suffer and also the setting to choose between the closest occluder and the specific game object doesn't make that much of a difference, at least for my iPhone 11, which does not have a LiDAR scanner, right? So if you have a, a newer or later device, you should definitely try out if this makes any difference for you. And the stabilization is also something that uh, can make a little bit of a difference. So make the, um, basically the occlusion a bit smoother, but also does not, um, well, make that much of added value at least from what I've been experimenting with. So these settings just to go with best or medium, temporary smoothing, then choose the occlusion suppression with the ground. This will give you some great results, especially if you're outside and if you're using shadows. So this is my recommendation to get kind of the best occlusion, but as you see in many some examples, occlusion is not really perfect and it really depends on having um, one of the later phone devices and maybe some with the lighter but also some of the later Android phones maybe get better occlusion than the older ones so this is something that will really improve just with improved hardware in the future but overall I think it's still a nice effect that can be used one great way to test out occlusion is to set up a scene with AR meshing and I got some tutorials on that so you can just follow this tutorial and then add the occlusion effect to that so you can very easily try out what works for you. And I would just want to encourage you to give it a try and add it to your AR experience to see if it can add some nice value to it. Alright, so thanks a lot for watching this video. I hope it was helpful and see you next time.